The June meeting yes. of the Urbana Free Library Board of Trustees will come to order. Uh, at this time, you have the roll call. Becky? I think we were going to do the oath of office first, so then we can do a roll call. Okay, okay, let's do that. Yeah. We first of all we'll need to swear in John Thies, a new board member. Right. <laughs> John, please repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the library trustee. The duties of the office of library trustee. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll ask you to sign right there. John, would you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I'm a native of Urbana. I uh, went to Urbana High School. Uh, I am a lawyer and went to the University of Illinois College of Law, where Jane was a longtime librarian. Um, I've practiced law for almost 29 years. Um, have served on a number of, of civic and professional business-related boards. And I'm very happy to join this one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Becky, you can right there. Right. <laughs> Here. 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 And John. Present. We have a quorum, but Barb, I expect Barb Jones. We haven't heard anything Barb yet. Barb Jones we? and Jeff and Michael. Yeah, we know those three are absent. Okay. Uh, are there any additions or corrections to the, to the agenda? If not, do I hear a motion to approve? I so move. I'll second. second there. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, oh, same sign. Uh, we will not be having a call for executive session tonight, so the meeting shouldn't be too long. Hoorah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> Do we have public comments? We have a presentation, but that's not public comments. Okay, then we're ready to move on to the New American Welcome Center by our community snapshot report by Christopher. De Devin and Megan. Awesome. Thank you both. Yeah. Thank you very much for having us. We're very happy to be here. Um, I'm Christopher, and uh, I'm here. We're here as representatives of the New American Welcome Center, which is a one year old initiative. Now, we just celebrated our, our first year of activity, really, in April, but we actually, I guess, technically, we're founded in, 20, in January of 2017. And we're out of the University YMCA. <clears throat> and we're basically a center that, an initiative that brings together, that comes, brings the community together to uh, better serve the local immigrant population and to enable a um, more thorough, a truer, and better uh, in, uh, immigrant integration in the community. We have over 400 uh, local providers, advocates, officials in our network that have come together um, from all parts of Champaign and Urbana, but also many other parts of the county, uh, from all kinds of sectors, healthcare and education, parks, um, private and uh, nonprofit and public, um, all kinds of different roles and sectors that have come together to discuss this uh, incredibly important uh, issue, uh, obviously nationally, but also, especially, uh, also for uh, our community, for Champaign County. And I'm going to start us off by diving into a report on the local immigrant population that we um, have been working on for several months and just released a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we did this in collaboration with two um, national organizations, uh, New American Economy is based out of New York City and um, helps produce these, kind, these kinds of reports and information to inform local policy. And uh, Welcoming America is a... Um, is a, uh, another national organization that's been based in Atlanta that does a lot of the same work, helping cities and helping advocates and organizations um, work inside this issue. And it was part of the Gateways for Growth grant. Uh, you can find the full report, I'm gonna hit some highlights, but you can find the full report online at university.org slash welcome. And if you're interested in um, um, a paper copy, we have only a couple, but if, you, if you'd like one, please let us know and we, we'll make sure to get you one. So, um, 
the immigrant population in the county has grown and settled into a significant role in our community. At this point, or at least in 2016, um, one in 10, over one in 10 people, uh, residents of the county were, were uh, born abroad and not born citizens. That's around 24,000 people, of which 14,000 are not students, right? So the bigger chunk, almost 60%, are not students, the other 10,000 being international college students. Uh, you can see from this trend line that the growth was pretty much happened mostly in uh, between 2000 and 2011, the most recent growth. After 2011, there was more of a flattening out. Um, uh, but basically, it's, it suggests that ma many members of our local immigrant population have been here for quite a while, have been here for at least eight years, right? So um, it suggests that there's uh, strong bonds of interdependence that have developed, and that's in fact what our report shows. If we look at um, the where, where people are coming from, this is again for the non-college student population, right? So we're not looking at college students, but everybody, but the more permanent, if you will, immigrant population. The top regions of origins are East Asia, uh, Europe, and North and Central Asia, North America, which is obviously mostly Mexico, and South Asia and Southeast Asia. However, the fastest growing uh, regions are all African. Uh, Central Africa, East and Southern Africa. And probably my favorite uh, piece of information from this report is that the survey that was used to, to, to collect this information reported that there were people in the non-college student population from 76 different countries. That's over a third of the countries in the world, all here in Central Illinois and Champaign County, which is just really um, impressive to me. Let's take a look at a little uh, a closer look at the cities where 80% of the county's immigrants live. Uh, the, so the numbers get much higher, of course. One in five Urbana residents are immigrants and one in eight Champaign residents. And we can notice the same trends that we're seeing countywide, a stronger growth 2000 to 2011, followed by more of a flattening out 2011 to 2016. Uh, there's also a, 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 a report really highlights the um, significant economic and financial contributions of immigrants in our community. Obviously in taxes, with tens of millions of, ta of local taxes contributed, uh, over 100 million in federal taxes contributed, but they're also, as it turns out, the lifeblood of many of our industries. Um, one in four, over 25% of the STEM sector workers in the county are immigrants, STEM being science, technology, engineering, mathematics, I think, right, so advanced industry. And uh, one in five education sector workers, over 20%, and uh, over one in 10, so anywhere between 11 and 13%, if I remember correctly, of manufacturing sector, hospitality and recreation sector, and healthcare sector workers. There's a lot of uh, also really interesting de uh, details uh, in the report. Uh, for example, uh, we can see that in the non-student uh, immigrant population uh, is very highly educated. They're in fact 50% more likely to have a university degree than the non-college uh, US born <coughs> population of the county. Uh, however, we can also notice um, some other trends, which especially for centers of learning like right here are, are very uh, important. So if you look at the very bottom rung on the education, on the left, uh, on the left columns, you see that uh, immigrants, the proportion of, of the immigrant population that has no degree at all is almost 10%, while in the US born population it's 5.6, so it's almost twice as high. And um, we can also see that on the right uh, bars, you can see that uh, the immigrant population is uh, much more concentrated in the 18 years old to 64 year old um, boxes. <laughs> I want to wrap up at least my section of the presentation by talking a little bit about interconnection, um, which is, I guess, the, um, the the report ostensibly tells you about the contributions of immigrant of the immigrant population. However, by showing that these contributions are so large, we implicitly talk about interconnection, how much we depend on each other, and I like to 
talk about that by talking about citizenship. Um, in the immigrant population, for the total immigrant population, one in three have already become citizens. That's a, around approximately 8,000 people. Uh, one in six may be eligible to become citizens. That's approximately 4,000 people. And I know you do a lot of good work uh, here in, in helping them do that. And uh, one in three, or approximately 7,000 people, a little over, uh, may be undocumented. Now, undocumented in, is a massive umbrella that encompass, encompasses so many different stories for how people um, came, uh, different ways that people came here without, uh, without status, or uh, different ways in, people, in which people came here and then eventually lost their status. Um, that, that's, it, for example, including our uh, DACA youth. But I think the, the, the most important thing for me uh, of this statistic is to realize that we often talk about the undocumented population as a block, right? And imagine them, I don't know, in some corner of the city living, living hidden lives. But the truth is, is that they're spread out throughout the, the population. Families are mixed status, right? So you'll obviously, one of the most common situations is that the parents will be undocumented while the children uh, being born in the United States will be citizens. But you have all kinds of different stories from undocumented uh, people having uh, documented spouses, having citizen spouses, they're spread out throughout the entire population. So I think what's important for us to remember is that whatever help or harm we decide to, um, to extend to these subsections of the community has ripple effects throughout the entire immigrant population. And as I've shown you, the immigrant population is now a significant and important part of, of our community. So therefore, what affects them will necessarily affect us as well, um, which is, I guess, I guess, the bigger underlying message that we're trying to, that we're trying to show in our report. Um, I'm Devin. Um, so as, uh, as Chris mentioned, uh, in, this report really goes a long way in um, creating sort of a, a positive um, association uh, um, between our community, uh, the Champaign County community at large, and, and our immigrant neighbors. Um, and I think that this really goes a long way in dispelling some of the, the more grotesque stereotypes that were propagated in the last few years. Um, and really, this report um, was created to address gaps in our knowledge and understanding of um, our immigrant neighbors within Champaign County. Um, so, of course, the report has its strengths, uh, principal among them, um, it captures the value of immigrants to Champaign County in economic and social contributions, um, and it also gives uh, a comprehensive view of the immigrant community to fill in some of those existing knowledge gaps. Um, but it also has its weaknesses. Uh, it doesn't give a good picture of the state of immigrants in the county, and it doesn't capture experiences. Um, like any quantitative assessment that relies on census data, there are limitations. Um, so one of the things that the report doesn't provide is a good representation of immigrants who are most in need. Uh, so for instance, 26% um, of, of the immigrant population in Champaign County earns less than 50% 50, 50 of the poverty level, which is actually uh, more than double the proportion for uh, U.S. born residents. Um, so ultimately, uh, quantitative and qualitative data mutually reinforce each other, and much of this qualitative data can only be collected, explored, and shared by community members and by community-based organizations like the library. Um, so really, you are our best place to further understanding of our immigrant neighbors and help those who need support. Um, and real inclusiveness and integration work begins at the community level and face-to-face -face interactions, uh, it begins with services like those provided by the Urbana Free Library and also by the New American Welcome Center. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie and Chris. Hello, everyone. My name is Megan. I'm the Communications Director here at the, well, at the Y. And I've been uh, working with the Welcome Center staff um, even before they got launched when it was a, when we were working on a couple of programs such as our Community Helpline program, La Linea, as well as our uh, New Americans Initiative program, which has, has assisted people uh, with citizenship application processing, resourcing people uh, to get 
uh, ESL classes such as um, at the Urbana Adult Education Center, uh, finding resources here at the library as, as well to assist people with uh, civic education and <coughs> information to help people with their citizenship tests. Um, I actually, when I started with uh, the work before it became the Welcome Center, um, I made the move to have office hours, some of the first office hours for the Welcome Center before it was with the Welcome Center here at the Urbana Public Library. Um, and I chose this space with um, uh, other immigrant leadership who had served as community navigators for the area because this was a space that was neutral. Uh, some spaces, people uh, had spaces at, at churches where people got services there, some people didn't feel comfortable. Uh, other groups didn't feel comfortable going to another church. Maybe um, the hours didn't match up with people's um, work hours. So um, providing the, providing a space here where people could come in the evening when uh, they were getting off work, or if we had it during the day when people could get off the lunch shower, it really did help out a lot. And uh, for example, uh, we also had expanded our services outside of the um, office hours here and are also working with the Urbana Adult Education Center, working with 16 students who are actually working on not only ESL but uh, preparing for the citizenship test. And they all came over here and got their library cards. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, as, they're, as they're working on their citizenship test, they're using a lot of the resources here to amend a lot of their studies and prepare and also um, work on language proficiency, which as we know, um, in addition to becoming a citizen and when you become English language proficient, um, it also adds a boost, um, average in on the state of Illinois, a boost of a little over $6,000 in your income. And, and you can find the, those sort of statistics at the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant Refugee Rights. Um, and so uh, stories like that that you will also find in the, um, in the report, which you'll can find online at universityymca.org forward slash welcome. Um, we have a couple of uh, stories about those community navigators who who, as, who assist people, connect people to the resources in the community. So they'll approach uh, nonprofits and public institutions, uh, nonprofits like the Y institutions, like the library here, to find to find access points and to help make them more welcoming. Uh, for their community members. So uh, you'll find stories from uh, Mauricio Salinas, who's a local business owner, um, and also Cesar uh, Nimpara, who's, uh, who, who is also uh, an ass assisting people out of the First Presbyterian Church in Champaign. And I had met those people actually through the office hours here. They would bring people from their communities to assist with, with uh, citizenship application preparation, with job preparedness, um, and, and anything else we could help people resource. This is a resource hub, and it was a space for people to get the, um, find the resources here within the library and also um, with, uh, in the community as well. And so what the report shows is, uh, from those stories, is how people became self-sufficient. You might not get that from the data, but we know that through these access points, through these navigators, um, they're helping people become self-sufficient through gaining access to the services, which then show those that data uh, for integration. And so the reason we're having these services, of course, is that we don't have a sort of space of infrastructure, like a, a community-wide infrastructure, and so we're doing the best we can, of course, through our various spaces to hold everything up. And so really, of course, the call to action is, all right, here's the data, Here's the stories we're gathering through listening sessions or hearing people um, as we serve them every day, one-on-one -on -one here at the library or at the Welcome Center at the Y. And as we're gathering the, that qualitative data and, and also hearing from service providers, the sort of theories they have in serving people, um, we can figure out the best way to use that data going forward to create a plan of action for inclusion in our community. And so that's really what we're doing here as we're reaching out to groups as such as yourselves uh, and sharing the data and you can come back and talk about the work and uh, hoping to move forward together as a community. So, thank you, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much. What connection do you have with the Immigrant Center that Anho runs? Do you work with her? You sure, Mac? Here in Urbana? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. She's on our board uh, alongside Celeste here. And, uh, 
uh, in the, um, uh, here at the library. So she has really been involved, I mean, from the beginning. Right? She's, she's, she was one of the first, she was one of the initial refugees before. For those that didn't know, Anho was on our board for several years. Oh, so. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, um, when I was uh, working as director pre becoming the Welcome Center, when we were just uh, working out with the helpline at the Y, uh, Anho was one of the first people I reached out to in the community. I mean, that is, she's been, that, that group has been providing services, of course, since the 80s, you know? <laughs> And so learning about communities there and ways we can better resource and assist others who are providing those services every day. I guess my biggest question is, how does a new immigrant to this community know to come to you at the Y? He, they do not. <laughs> That's actually the, the, um, the, the, that kind of connection, that outreach, is what all of the community organizations and public institutions struggle with in reaching out to the community, which is why these kinds of networks are so helpful. Um, first of all, let me say that we kind of have a, a, a two-ended mission here because we are we have a lot of direct service provision, like the ones Megan um, talked about, by being our helpline, citizenship class and stuff. Those are all very much provided in partnership with community organizations like yourself, right? So we act as kind of like cross referrals, if you will, which is the way the system, which is the way a lot of all of the um, service providers of the community offer services and jointly. Uh, but we have this other side where we focus on you, right? We focus on the partner organizations that are part of the uh, New America Welcome Center Coalition and helping them basically enhance their work. Um, so in, in a way, we're so we're kind of playing two uh, two sides of strategy here. One helping immigrants directly, the other one helping people who help immigrants. John, um, I'm a lawyer and I'm also president of Land of Lincoln Legal Assistance Foundation. Yes. And I'm curious because I know that a lot of these people have rather significant legal needs. Are you connecting with the local our local office of Land of Lincoln? Oh, Land of Lincoln. Yes, I, I know I've given, when I used to run the, the helpline um, with volunteers, I used to make a lot of referrals to Land of Lincoln. And uh, we actually just recently started a monthly legal clinic here at the library. Um, it's the free services, and um, it's all around non-immigrant non law. So all, the, all where we have to refer out people um, is in terms of like family law, and we're able to assist that. And it's just a beginning point. We're working with Ruth Wyman right now on family law issues. But we're just through having more people come in month to month, we really need to build up those services. People have issues like questions about um, not only marital family issues, we've had questions about whether people's DUIs had been cleaned, cleaned up or if that was an issue, or, or um, yes, there's lots of... Uh, and are you working with Land of Lincoln to set those times up? So I know that our, our director of the New American Welcome Center is definitely looking to um, expand the legal clinic. They just started piloting it a few, was it a couple of months ago yeah. now? It's a, so they've had about, I think, maybe two right now. Okay. <laughs> two legal clinics here at the... Um, I'll watch to see. Yeah, I will, I will contact our director, Gloria Yin, and I'll ask her to um, reach out with the land of Lincoln okay, because they're, I know they're definitely looking to expand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's a big need. I, I encourage you. Thank you. Other questions? It sounds to me like you've got a tiger by the tail, but I don't know where you find the, the resources and the, the make things happen. I mean, I can think of the various organizations that exist, and <clears throat> you used to have an attorney here in town that just loved to do the naturalization of them. these people. Dave Bernthal, maybe that name's familiar to you. He still loves to do the ceremony, I think, doesn't he? Uh, well, really he's retired. He works, he's works, he works with me oh, in the, my office. So John's the... But he doesn't, uh, yeah, he, he can't do that anymore. He's no longer oh, a okay. sitting judge. Does this have any relevance or is your emphasis because of our sisters, our, our cities deciding to be sanctuary sister, uh, communities? Yes, sir. Um, we, we've been doing this work before the cities actually mm -hmm. signed, signed on to the, those, um, looked into the sort of welcoming, the welcoming statuses. I think Urbana was looking to, um, had declared sanctuary status, but they recently 
had both decided to join the Welcoming American Network, which is a network of cities and counties where they were mayors um, and, of course, um, uh, county chambers of commerce connect together and talk about ways they can uh, be more inclusive to um, grow, grow economically and also support um, um, cultural contributions that uh, constituents are <coughs> giving to the area. So, so I know that's something they've done. The Y has been doing uh, the La Lina Community Clubland Program and the AI Program, the New Americans Initiative Program, since 2011. And uh, I have started, I have, work, have been working with that since 2012. Uh, we recently got this designation in the New American Welcome Center from the YMCA of the USA, which is headquartered in Chicago. Um, the, so our y, all the, the YMCA that helps all of the associ associations nationwide with various resources and staying great brain compliant programmatically um, as well. So this is a new initiative that they've started where um, people in communities, newcomers, immigrants in the communities are coming to YMCAs looking for services and YMCAs are trying to turn back around to what their program programming was originally, which was to serve people beyond facilities, sort of gym, pool, daycare stuff, which is very important, but that's some, that's some of the work they were founded on coming back to that work. Yeah, so I, I, I would add that um, you know, this, this grant that, that uh, Megan is talking about, um, you know, for, for YUSA, it, I think initially they choose, they chose 20 cities nationwide and Champaign, the, the University of Y, was one of the 20 and it's really the only community of its size, um, you know, a, a moderate, a moderate sized city. Everything else was much, much bigger. Boston, um, New York was in the list. Right. Yeah. So, so I think this is really a matter, it should be a matter of pride for the community to, to, that we were chosen for this and it really signifies that Champaign-Urbana and, and Champaign County is in the forefront of, of welcoming uh, immigrants for, for moderate sized cities and in the Midwest too. Um, and, and I think I would add too that um, in terms of uh, cities wanting to welcome immigrants, it's due to a recognition that immigrants are really a large part of our community. You know, uh, Chris mentioned 24,000 people, that's, that's a big number. Um, and when you look at other uh, similarly sized communities, it's, it's not that big and, and the economic contributions are not necessarily that big. Um, so really I think we are looking to uh, partner with anybody that we can to increase these connections and increase these contributions um, to make Champaign-Urbana and Champaign County uh, as welcoming as possible for immigrants and really that will lead into a, a more prosperous uh, welcoming community for everybody. And so of course part of the integration is integration of, of everyone and so looking at um, also community bridge building between communities who are receiving immigrants as well as immigrants and newcomers who are coming to the area. So part of my work at the Welcome Center is around the um, Welcoming uh, Collaborative, which is is started with welcoming, um, having a welcoming week, which is a national week of events celebrating what communities are doing to be welcoming and the sort of inclusive work that we've been doing um, through highlighting services and, and reaching out to newcomers and immigrant neighbors and turning that work into how we can do that year-round, bringing receiving communities and immigrant communities together through through um, work that supports dialogue and supports connection and better understanding through increased connection. Yeah, related to Welcome Week, I've got a couple of, I'm in a couple of organizations that are wondering, it's sec is it second week of September? Is it is September, okay. se yes, September uh, 15th through the 24th this year. And uh, we'll be sending out some save the dates. And okay. we, we're having actually, if you're interested in joining that collaborative, um, I'm helping facilitate that um, collaborative. And it's a, again, a broad, broad cross section of, of public institution leadership, um, local government, um, social service providers, school districts, park districts. Um, and we meet, we try to meet once a month, but, once a month, but now since it's increased, as September is just around the corner, really for the type of programming we're doing, we'll, we're starting to meet every two weeks. And so we'll have our next meeting June 21st. And uh, if anybody's interested in joining that collaborative, um, just uh, I have business cards, I can hand them to you and I can get you on the list. 
they're amazing. Last year, almost 3,000 people came out to 40 different events organized by almost six different community partners. It was fantastic. Well, I thank you for yeah. alerting thank you so us. For us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. I think you know to contact her when you've got ideas that we can help with. Okay. <laughs> uh, the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second to that? Okay, the consent agenda cons consists of board minute meetings of May 8th, payroll of May 11th, payroll of May 25, payroll of June 8th, bills for May 16, and bills for May 21. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is for the election of officers for the year 1819. Uh, I think the nominating committee has reported to you, as you see on your minutes, myself as the president, Vice President Beth Scheid, who has served a number of years as our secretary treasurer, Jeff Bant as secretary, and Barbara Jones as the secretary pro tem, because we do need these things signed. So all those in favor of the ballot as nominated, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Do you have a motion? I, I so move that the second. Oh, I'm sorry. I second. <laughs> I thought we had a second. Metaphor, I mean a motion, but I <coughs> Now you got it. Yeah, we got it. Do we need to vote again, do you feel? Why not? Okay, all those in favor of the motion that John made? Aye. 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 All those opposed, <laughs> same sign. Thank you. Okay, the ordinance of 2 1807, uh, establishing a, a special reserve fund. We talked about this the last time. We have not had uh, I guess it's, you'd say it's been co-mingled. <laughs> so we're setting up that fund. Do you have any questions you'd like to address to our director? Do we have any idea how much money that would be? What's that, happened in previous years? The blank was left in there. That's what you're referring to, aren't you? Yeah, no, <laughs> Do we need to make that decision as a board whether we put any amount in that or not? There's, there's, I want to make sure I'm hearing the question. There's, there, there's two things. There's the first thing, which is creating the plan. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to go to, there's the plan and there's the fund. So the first thing on the agenda is, do you want to have a fund? Okay, and the second one is the amount. It's okay. the plan, which may or may not include a dollar amount okay. as a cap. And you okay. get to choose whether or not you to need that. So, I wasn't sure if your question, Jane, had to do with forming the plan, the fund itself, or about the dollar amount. The dollar amount. The dollar amount, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion about whether to establish such a fund? If not, do I have a motion to establish this fund? So moved. It's our second step. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, now to Jane's question. As to the dollar amount, it's left blank at this time. It's not required that we have one, and I guess I'm inclined for us to leave it without amount because it seems to me. Like, oh, the question though that goes along with that is two years. What is the the limitations of the two years of the fund? Just a matter of reporting, or is it a matter of establishment and holding? The two years, so we have two ordinances here. One is to form the special reserve fund, and one is to have the ordinance for the plan. You actually don't have to have the plan tonight. The law gives you two years to have an ordinance for the plan. Wow. It has been recommended to us that we do both at the same time because libraries sometimes forget <laughs> to come back and create a plan, so then you're not in compliance with the law. So I would recommend that you pass some type of plan tonight that you can always amend later at any later date of your choosing. But we could pass the plan without the amount of dollars in it. Correct. Yeah. So there's a paragraph here that says, be it further ordained that the amount to be accumulated in said special reserve fund, blah, 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 is a dollar amount. You can vote to strike that paragraph if you don't want to have a cap 
which is what the uh, administration is recommending. It's not required that there be a ceiling. And so you can choose to have a ceiling or you can choose not to have a ceiling. That is up to you. But I would recommend creating a plan tonight. Yeah, John. I, I was going to ask if staff had a recommendation about whether to identify a number or simply to strike that section. I would recommend striking the section. I wanted it in there in case you wanted to have it so that we weren't. So moved. Is there a second to that? Second. All those in favor, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> okay, that's the, the plan that we've made the motion on, right? Uh, mm -hmm. No, that was the second. Yeah, we second. had the plan yeah, already approved. Yes. We just. We made the motion to. A, we just approved the second ordinance that says that we're not going to have a limit. Do we need to strike this paragraph? I think that's what my we motion just was. Did. Yeah, we just did. did. Except, oh, we did that. Except okay. staff's recommendation. The first thing was to form the special reserve fund. Yeah. And the second thing, yeah. as I understood it, was yeah. to adopt the plan as written, although striking the one paragraph. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. We accomplished both. So we're ready for a resolution. 2018-11, uh, prevailing wage. This is something that we do every year, so I don't think there's any question. Is there any, uh, does anybody have any question? If not, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I thank you on that. Resolution 2018-12, <clears throat> Um, the, the agreement between the Urbana Free Library and the Urbana Schools, professional engineering services for repairs of the, not the schools, I'm sorry, services to repair the Urbana Free Library East Porch. It's not that big to repair all the schools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I thank you on that. Okay, the next one has to do with our con continuation of the uh, amendment for the janitorial services. Um, staff has not had time to work, <laughs> get out bids, so uh, we're extending it. Is it your length of time that that extension will go? This is for three more months. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve that? I so move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Approve, disapprove, same sign. Thank you. Okay, budget amendment for FY18. I, I may interject one thing. You have in front of you, uh, and the reason I'm interjecting is I need to run out for a second. We had a couple of changes come through in getting more bills in the end of the fiscal year. There are a couple more bills that need to be paid that are taking us over the amounts we thought would be the case. So you got something over Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, this is a change to Saturday. There are two colors along the side, but there's no email yet. So the blue ones are changes altogether because we found out that some extra bills are coming in for services done. Everyone should have this at the table. Mm -hmm. And there's one that is, uh, there's one cell that is like a pink or orange. It's supposed to be orange and blue, but it didn't come up with it. The number I had, the difference, and that's on the second page, the orange one's on page two. So I had pulled from the wrong cell column. The difference of $4,000 is the same, but the total of what will be in that budget line is different, so I wanted to reflect that. But you saw me maybe uh, doing some math over here. I feel really uncomfortable with um, one of the difference lines for the insurance line, I feel like something's missing. So if I could beg like three minutes to run my office, just check that Excel spreadsheet. Because we, we were literally adding these things in as we looked at the budget and the bills that came in today. And so this is the last time we have to, that we can approve this. Unless we have yeah. a special meeting later yeah, in the month, which you know we prefer not to do. So I could have three minutes to run, check my spreadsheet, make sure the changes all went in there. So I don't want to be off five thousand dollars. No. So no. might I beg your um your yes. Go team. thank you. <laughs> I was right, we were short $1,000. So if anyone wants a new copy, I will, I will just pass them around. The only difference is that for insurance, the new budget will be $168,250 instead of $169,250. But that way you've got the real budget. Sorry about that. 
was already planned. So. Which about again is not online yet. Right, right. It's at the old line. Uh, so yeah. Oh, there I see it. Part of this is with Lavina's transition, things are lining up in different ways. Yeah. What did you say that the change was? One. It is in the insurance line, yeah. which is about... 60 uh, instead of 167. So it's the second change on the front page. 18, so or 187. No, 168. To 144. No. no, 168 to 50 is the new number. I'm looking at the wrong insurance then. Um, versus 169. Chris? From from what I had given you earlier today. Oh, 168. Today. Yep. There, 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 there. there. Is, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I've dropped a line down. That's what I'm. So, thank you for the time. Okay, this is having to do with the 18 budget. Like I say, this is the last time we can adjust that. Any other questions? If not, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Jane. Jane did. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I thank you on that. Um, John, to kind of give you an idea, we adjust budgets frequently. <laughs> so that, and the June is the end of our year, so you know where Last we're shot. coming from. Okay, the 19 budget. It's also on there, and it's the columns closer in. So you can also see the, the right. left and right. There's the 19. Oh, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So there are adult and new services changes. The staff looked at what their spending was looking like for the end of the year now, and they want to make some changes right up front so when they start budgeting and spending for next year, so they recommended some changes between uh, DVDs and books, purchasing more books for your DVDs or CDs. And then we have a couple of staff people who took on new responsibilities and promotions. And we had, again, set aside money for these things to happen. So you're seeing um, $10,000 plus come out of the administration line where they've been in a holding place and going into a couple of the different departments, acquisitions and circulation. So these are changes that we knew would come as far as um, the HR pieces were going. And then Adult New Services wanted to be proactive about spending, reflecting what our patrons are using. Those two promotions take effect when? Have taken effect already. Have taken effect. Yep. Okay. Any questions you'd like to ask us, Celeste? If not, do I hear a motion to approve the amendment to the 19 budget? So moved. Is there a second? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I thank you on that. Okay. We appointed Carol Innsbruck to Innskeep to be our public television representative, which she has been in the past, but we didn't have a motion. So we need a motion to... No, you're fine. You're fine. It, it needs to go through the library board, and the, um, we didn't know that it was her three-year term was up, and so you didn't have the opportunity to nominate her because we didn't know her term was up. But we need to, as a board, nominate her. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So that's a motion. Yes, and so city council has appointed her, but it doesn't stand oh. because you didn't nominate her, and that's what the city ordinance says, or the code has to happen. So um, if, if you would be so kind as to nominate her. And if you looked at that, job. it's a three-year term. She has served one or two terms before. She's been raised in 2006. So, so a number she's, of terms. Oh, she's she serves every term. She represents us well. So I, I move that we nominate her yeah. to this <laughs> very important position. I second that. Yeah. All the, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Proposed workplace violence policy. Does anybody have any questions? We'll vote on it next month. I see no problem with it. It seems like it's cut and dried. Uh, there was one thing, I can't think what it was. I guess we'll think about it. If you haven't had time, Barb? What prompted it? It's required. Um, it's required or is it? It's recommended. Yeah. yeah. Um, Don, do you want to speak to this at all? It was, um, I believe it's in the ALA um, standards. Okay. Uh, and it was as an uh, appendix or an addendum. ILA? ILA, sorry. ILA. 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 And there have been a number of incidents in different workplaces across the country. Yeah. And so we're trying to be proactive. We are being proactive right. in a number of ways. Okay. And this is one way to put onto paper our commitment to our staff, who are the most important yes. part of the language. So this covers gun violence and the yeah. 
I know there was something I can't think of. So this will be voted on next meeting? Next meeting, yeah. Yeah, it's next month. We've got time. Okay, moving on then. Friends of the library, Barbara has... Uh, Barbara. Barbara is going to take that position. I have appointed her to do that. She offered and nobody came forward other than that, so I appoint Barbara for that. Uh, Je the, uh, Anna had that position, and we'll look forward to it. Do you have anything to report from friends? Just what we had said before, and that the friends are, of course, accepting donations, and their next book sale is going to correspond to the Sweet Corn Festival at the end of August. Yeah. It looks like they're mailing one out. Yes. For the end of the fiscal year mailing. Yes. Yeah. It was the second mailing. It was the second mailing, exactly. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I liked uh, Ruth's letter. Um, that's the foundation. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, I'm looking at foundation here. Yeah, we talk about friends. Right. Yeah. All right. I'm down one already. Yeah. yeah. Okay, foundation. We'll move on to that one. All right. Um, the foundation, I would say the, there is a committee that's working every two weeks to determine uh, naming and levels, which we, our board asked them to do, and they are working on that. Any report from that that you uh, know of? Not yet. We're working yeah. in general fundraising, too, which is what Beth was speaking to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Second now letter went out. Right, no, it was a question. It was just a comment that I liked the letter yeah. in the News Gazette oh, yeah. that Ruth had yeah. just pointed out the yeah. needs and the value, and I thought that was a yeah. Yeah. nice... And I think Ruth can make it, and everybody knows who Ruth is, so. <laughs> Um, the Heartland End, uh, Library system, Jeff, of course, is gone. He's gone to his son is in California, a badly needed vacation. Uh, do you know of anything from Heartland? I do not. Okay. Administrative report. Nothing? The only thing I can report is I hope that the, I see all the board, oh, I won't be there full time, uh, but I hope you do attend the July 7th celebration. I have felt in the past that when the, the Cinderella ball and all those things and we don't see board members there, I think it's part of your obligation to attend a little bit of it so that you see the excitement. So that's July 7th. The times? Um, it starts at 1 p.m. and um, the activities are various and fun and exciting. And they will conclude at 5.30. We will be having um, events, um, we have music, we have a lecture, we have children's activities, um, we will have two um, fabulous exhibits on the history of the library um, in the building We're going up both on the second and first floor and we'll also be um, displaying the original, recently um, conserved um, blueprints of the Royal Portland building and they'll be on this, the, origin, the originals will be on display. Is there any other business to come before the board tonight? If not, I declare the board meeting adjourned. Okay.